My name is Jasmine Rosario. I'm one of the admissions um, representatives at UMass Amherst, one of the people that's going to be reading your application. I have my colleague, uh, colleague Dylan with me, who's going to be listening to my presentation. Um, so that's why I do see somebody lurking in the back of Sweden. Um, how many of you guys have been to UMass Amherst? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> How'd you like it? I like the vibe. Wasn't too big? Yeah, it's too big. Too big? Like perfect size. Yeah. Perfect size? Okay. Just like so we're actually considered a medium-sized school for the United States, so we're really big and for this region, but um, there are some undergraduate universities that have like 50, 60,000 students, so we're not anywhere near there, but because we have so many colleges in the Northeast, this is just like the home for all the colleges in the nation, um, we're one of the biggest. So we're considered a large public research institution. If anybody wants any stuff, I'll just put it up here. So we have 22,000 undergraduate students, okay, um, and about 100 majors to choose from, including build your own major. So a lot of different academic offerings that you can have when you get to our campus. Um, we break our majors down into 10 schools and colleges. So the first thing that you do when you get to our campus is become part of that school or college. So that 22,000 undergraduate students gets reduced by one tenth of that size, right? Um, so even if you're undeclared or undecided, you're still going to be part of a school or college because we don't have true undeclared or undecided. We have what we call exploratory tracks. So we ask you to pick one of our 10 schools and colleges and then be undecided in that school. So maybe you know that you like one of the sciences, uh, but we have biology, microbiology, biochemistry, molecular biology. Like Which one of those do you want to take? You might not know yet. So you can be undeclared in the natural science school. Um, some of the schools and colleges are more competitive than others, so they don't allow you to do an exploratory track right off the bat. Those schools and colleges are Eisenberg School of Management, Engineering, Computer Science, and Nursing. So if you're interested in any of those programs, definitely apply directly into those programs, but I'll get into that more in a second. Um, so overall, we have over 300 clubs and organizations, so a lot of things to do are active and busy. Uh, we have over 400 study abroad programs, so if you're interested in leaving the country, uh, perhaps you want to go for a semester or a full, full year, you have that option. If you don't want to go away for that long of a time, but you maybe want to do a summer trip or a spring break trip, you have that option. Do you want to live on a college campus? Do you want to live with a host family and be like an additional sibling into a family? Do you want all your classes in English or all your classes in a foreign language? So they'll start talking to you about what the options are uh, and give you a list to, to choose from. We also have a uh, domestic exchange where you can visit another university in the United States. So maybe you want to go to the West Coast, you don't want to do all your years there, but you want to just visit or you want to go down south. Um, some of our students will go off the mainland to the University of Hawaii, that's a really popular option. Um, so you can visit another institution for a semester, kind of get additional courses, supplement your education, and then come back to us. So there's a lot of things to do. We try to keep you busy, to keep you active. If you're a student who wants to have a busy schedule, wants to network, um, we're a research institution. We're a large public research institution. Uh, we get the third largest amount of funding for research in the state, right behind Harvard and MIT. So we're a really good company with really amazing universities to support any kind of research that you want to do. All of our faculty are researchers. So some colleges will say, we're a teaching school, which means that a lot of the times the professors have worked in the fields that they're teaching you, and now they are full-time professors. We're a research institution, which means our professors need to be active in the fields that they're teaching you. So they're not just teaching, they're also publishing and researching that same subject. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for you as undergrad to get published, to work on any projects that you have. Um, research is not just science, right? It's across the board. So we'll have students who will do research projects on costume design, or we'll have research projects on um, you know, food science. We have students do capstones on cookbooks and things. So there's a lot of different um, areas that you can research. We have the number one dining in the nation. <coughs> I should have led with that. Did you guys know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you eat our food? Yeah. Is it good? It's pretty good. I don't know who's in charge of like going to all the dining commons in the country to taste it, but we do have really good food. I think part of the reason is we do get a lot of our stuff locally sourced. So if you were driving out there, you probably saw the city kind of turn into a lot of open fields, and you probably saw some cows grazing and some horses, um, and then UMass Amherst turns into a really nice city all over again. So you get the best of all of those landscapes, um, and we do get some of our food from the local farmers in the backyard and all that, so I'm sure that helps with our food being good. 
We are Division I athletics, so we have 21 varsity sports. We also have club sports and intramural sports if you want to play, you don't want to do the rigor of a varsity sport. Um, and we have a lot of school spirit on our campus. So our students go and support our teams, even if they're not athletic. Um, and as I said, it's active. So we want to know that you're an active student and want to take advantage of all the resources that we have. All right, so are you guys mostly seniors? No. Okay. So you're, we're on the Common App. Have you guys started the Common App? Yes. All right, great. Have you guys done the FAFSA? Yes. <laughs> on it. Perfect. So it's, it became available October 1. Do you have until March 1, I believe, to submit the FAFSA? But I would just say the sooner the better, the sooner you can get your stuff. Uh, typically, it's the more money you get, the sooner that you apply, right? So they have like this fund pot of money, and as the time goes by, that funding pot gets smaller and smaller and smaller, so they have less money to give you if you wait towards the end. So just get it so you can get all the money. Um, so we're on the Common App. The things that we require for the Common App are your transcript, your standardized test scores, are not test optional, um, at least one letter of recommendation, but most of our students will send about three, um, an essay, and the letter, um, and your activities list are components of the application. We have two deadlines, early action and regular decision. Early action is November 5th, so it's right around the corner, and regular decision is January 15th. Do you guys know when your first quarter grades become available? Next, 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 next November 8th. 8. 8. Mm -hmm. All right, so you can still apply early action. So anyone can apply early action or regular decision. Students will ask me, what, what do you think is better? What do you prefer? I usually say that if you want us to see your senior year grades, because that's important, maybe you're on an upward, you do better and better each year, you kind of have this upward trend, um, you may want to apply regular decision if your grades are not available in time. If they are available in time, then either one is up to you. If you want nursing or music, definitely apply early action, okay? Um, music definitely is a required um, deadline because they want to make sure you have enough time to audition. And for nursing, it's just, I just say it's required. It's not anywhere on our website, but it's such a competitive major and we have such a small amount of students that you have your best bet if you do an early action application. For everybody else, it's up to you. So our deadline is November 5th. Um, if your grades come out November 8th, you may still be able to submit those senior year grades, right, as long as we haven't made a decision for you, but please submit your transcript. Like, don't wait until November 8th for your senior year grades to come out or else your application Well, they'll have their grades, but the most updated transcript will be updated November 8th. Well, oh, they'll have their grades by next week, yeah. Sorry senior grades. That. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So, then it's up to you mm -hmm. what you want to do. Some schools will say, well, our fir first quarter doesn't close until Thanksgiving, and then I say, well, then I'll apply regular decision yeah. if you want me to see your senior year grades. So you guys are good. Um, so the first thing that we do when you get your transcript is recalculate your GPA. That is a state requirement. All the UMasses are going to do it. All the state schools are going to do it. We're going to be looking for 17 required units. This is typically what you need to graduate from high school anyway. Four years of college prep English, four years of math, three years of a lab science, two years of a social science, two years of a foreign language, and two years of an elective. Okay? If you have a documented learning difference where you're not required to take a foreign language, or if your high school doesn't require you because you are a native speaker of another language and so you're already bilingual, we will take that into consideration. If you um, take additional courses, like you're taking four years of science instead of three, or four years of social science, we can count those as electives, but we'll also take your art and music courses as elective as well. One thing that we don't do is take multiple art and music electives in one particular year. So if you have a, a senior year, we have study block, art, jazz band, choir. I'm not gonna use art, jazz band, and choir into your GPA. I'm just gonna take one of those, whichever is the highest, and kind of get rid of the rest. So that's kind of where our recalculation comes into play with regard to units. Then we give you weight where it's necessary. So if you're taking honors classes, all your Bs get bumped up to B pluses, or those 3.0s get bumped to 3.3s. And if you're taking AP classes, all your grades get bumped up one full point, so all your Bs turn to A's. Um, if you have the dual enrollment option, if any of you guys are taking HCC classes, all of those are weighted as AP courses too, so all of these at the HCC classes get bumped up to A's, and you could also get some college credit for them if you submit the college transcript. Okay, so we come up with a new recalculated weighted GPA for you, we look at the remaining components of your application. We give you all the prompts on the essay, okay, so you can tell us whatever it is that you want to tell us. But well, one thing that is unique about the way we read applications at UMass Amherst is that we read by major. So a lot of the colleges that um, are visiting you read by high school. So you'll have one person that reads all of Holyoke High. We don't do it that way. So I might read your application, but I might not. 
because it really depends on what major you're applying into. So that might not matter to you, but it is important when you're thinking about what you're going to be telling us and what you're writing. Um, so for example, I read for the College of Engineering, and I, as I read, I start to see a profile, I start to see a pattern, I start to see the type of student that wants to be an engineer, right? I read a lot of essays about Legos. Like that's just a topic that a lot of my engineers like to tell me. So if you're thinking about standing out, kind of setting yourself apart from the group of students who are applying into that major, maybe think of something new to tell me. Maybe don't write an essay about Legos or don't necessarily write an essay about STEM. Write me something that I cannot gather for your application, okay? If you're getting good grades in all your science and math courses, and you're getting a better math SAT than your verbal, and you're applying it to engineering, right there I can tell this is a science and math student. They really are strong in STEM. This is their area. It might not be necessary to write me a whole other essay on how much you love STEM. I want to now know what else is it about you that I cannot gather from the application. Does that make sense? So there's not one specific thing, but let us know. We also have a supplement. We have um, an optional supplement. It's listed as optional. Why do you want to go to UMass Amherst and why do you want to major in what you want to major in? I like to just tell people it's required. Just do it. We're the flagship state school in the state of Massachusetts. We get 42,000 applications. And a lot of times students are just going, UMass, because we're there, because we're the state school, right? I want to know, are you really applying to UMass Amherst because that's where you want to be? Or is it just kind of a checkbox on your list and now you have 15 schools you're applying to? So that's one of the first places that I go to to see. What did you say about what you want to major? And what did you say about why you want to be at UMass Amherst? It's only 100 words or something like that. It's really short. It's a short answer. It's not an essay. But take the time to let me know why you want to come to our school. Okay. We look at your activities. So it's not necessarily for quantity, so don't panic. But we want to know that you're practicing time management now. Okay, so as I said, we're a busy campus, 22,000 undergrads, 300 clubs, like there's so much to do that if you don't do anything ever after school, like no job, no clubs, no activities, you have no sibling, you just go home and lock yourself in your room, I'm going to be like, you must be too busy for the student. You know, I'll, you know, even if you're super academically prepared, this is, might not be the environment, right? So we just want to know that you're practicing time management now so that when you get to our campus, you already know how to juggle something outside of school with your academics, and that's why you know, you're able to kind of keep up your grades. If you have nothing else to do, I'm gonna assume that you have time to just have straight A's, right? Because all you have to do is like get tutoring and nothing else, but that's not realistic. You guys have lives, so we wanna know what are you doing with your lives? And it also puts into context your grades, okay? Maybe this is why the student is getting B's or C's in this courses, and if they come to UMass Amherst and keep up the same type of work habits, then they'll get B's in those courses at UMass Amherst, and that's okay, okay? So tell us what you do. Um, so what did I say? Transcripts, standardized test scores, letters of rec, pick a teacher or counselor, anybody, at least one person from your school, and then anybody else, if you have a mentor, a religious leader, a boss, that can be an additional recommendation as well. Um, activities and essays, so those are the components. For those of you who are applying into a competitive major, anyone here interested in engineering, business, or computer science? Great, so those are com considered competitive on our campus, which means that they have higher GPA SAT requirements and they have um, specific course requirements that they want you to have. Uh, so for example, for engineers, we want you to have physics, we want you to have pre-calc, and we want you to have chemistry, okay? We also want you to have a 620 or better on the math section of your SAT. And if that sounds high, here's where your first choice and second choice majors gonna come into play, specifically for these competitive majors. Don't apply mechanical engineering, first choice, electrical engineering, second choice. Don't do that. Don't apply computer systems engineering, first choice, and computer science, second choice. Those are both competitive areas. We're reviewing you for the school. If we can't put you in mechanical engineering, we can't put you in electrical engineering. Now you've locked yourself out of admission. Pick one major that's in a competitive school and one major that's not in a competitive school. So for example, physics is a great second choice for an engineer. Math is a great second choice for um, a computer scientist, and so on. So in your brochure, when you, don't have to, when you get home or whatever, when you're filling out your application, it shows you the school and college breakdown. So it shows you what majors are in what schools. So go to the school that you want, engineering. Say, all right, these are the majors that I'm applying into, just one. And then anything that's not in those schools or colleges should be a good second choice for you. 
So what that means is that we're going to assist you with an internal transfer process back into the original major that you want if you're not admitted into that major right out of high school. Okay. Um, computer science, same thing. Business. Accounting and finance is in the Eisenberg School of Management. Economics is not in the Eisenberg School of Management. Marketing and management is in Eisenberg. Communications is not. So econ and communications are good second choice majors for you if you want Eisenberg. Okay. So you're applying into your first choice major. We're going to review you for that. If you're admitted, go directly into it. If you're not admitted to your first choice, we look for your second choice and hope that you're admissible to your second choice. Then you get an advisor when you come to the UMass Amherst campus and that advisor will help you with the process of transferring into your major that you want. The nice thing about that is that anything from high school disappears, right? So no one's gonna call me and say, well, what did the student get on their SATs? Once you're admitted to UMass Amherst, that's it. And now when you try to switch around major, they're just gonna say, let's see your UMass Amherst transcript. How are you doing here right now? How are you doing in our physics class? And that's what will be a determination. So if SATs was an issue that held you back, now it's not gonna be a factor. Um, nursing, who's interested in nursing? A couple people. Okay, so one thing I will add about nursing is that typically we don't review you automatically for your second choice major unless you ask us to explicitly, somewhere in writing. So it might seem redundant. You're already asking me first choice, second choice. I'm assuming you're gonna uh, review me for my second choice. But for nursing, we don't unless you ask us to. The reason why is because most schools don't allow for an external or internal transfer. Meaning, if I accept you as a biology student, as your second choice, for example, and you come to UMass Amherst, you have to be a biology student or something else. You can never go into nursing anymore, right? You have to come right out of high school. So if you come in as a biology student and you say, I want to start nursing, and you get there and didn't know, because I didn't tell you this in the information, um, you say, well, I didn't know I couldn't do nursing. I'm going to go to the other schools that I got into. I got into Elms. I just chose UMass Amherst. Ellis is going to say, you can't transfer here. Like, we don't expect transfers. You already deposited at UMass. You're already a student there. It's too late. We don't want to do that to you. Like, I don't get extra money by getting you all to come to UMass Amherst. So I don't want to put you in a position where you can't do the career that you want to do. You would have to complete a four-year program and then do nursing somewhere else or some, something. It gets complicated. However, we also know that there's students who are applying into nursing who are not dead set on nursing, who want maybe pre-med or public health or something in the medical field. They apply into nursing but want to explore other things. If you're that type of student that says, okay, that's fine if I don't get into nursing, please still accept me to your school so I can do other stuff. If you're that student, then just say so on the application. Just say, if I'm not admitted to nursing, I would like to be considered for my second choice. And then I know that you heard what I said at this presentation and we can move forward. Does that make sense? All right. Um, we also have an honors program. So every student gets reviewed for the honors program. You don't need to apply for the honors program. As long as you're submitting a common app, we're going to review you for honors, and we're going to review you for any money that we have. Um, there's about an 8% acceptance rate into the honors program right out of high school, so it's a lot more competitive than when you apply as a UMass Amherst student. Um, the average, um, GPA for an, a student that's getting admitted into CHD out of high school is like over 4.0. An average SAT is like mid 1300s or so. Um, so it's clearly more competitive out of high school. Once you're a UMass Amherst student, I believe you need a 3.6 GPA to maintain that and you can apply into the honors program. The benefit of those is that your classes are a lot smaller. So 80% of our classes have 40 students or less. But for honors classes, they're capped at 25. So you get to know your professors really well. They're more discussion based. Um, our, our professors who are doing research often go to our honor students to be research assistants. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities. And then you do additional coursework outside of your major. It's like an honors project that you complete by your senior year and submit it. It's really cool to put on your resume. It's, if you're interested in doing research, you're kind of getting that process started early. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, can you only get into the honors program straight out of high school? No, anytime. So 3.6 is the college GPA that you need to be admitted, um, and it's much more competitive out of high school. So I would say the majority of our students in CHC got in once they were at UMass Amherst, just because we only have, I think, like 2,000 spots. We have 22,000 admits, right? So it, it gets a little bit tricky. Now we have to start like looking really closely. Um, but it's not just GPA and SAT that we look for for the Commonwealth Honors. Like we are looking at your activities. Do you have leadership? Um, you know, are you do you have leadership roles in those club and activities? 
Um, how strong is your essay? What are your counselors and teachers saying about you? So all of those things are factored in. Um, so there are students who have really strong academics who still don't get admitted into honors because the rest of the application kind of falls flat. They're admissible to the school, welcome, you're really smart, but maybe not honors at this moment. Then show us your performance at, once you get to your math campus. So our total cost of attendance is $30,000 a year. Okay, that's sticker price, that includes our room and board, that includes our mandatory fees, that includes our health insurance, that includes um, unlimited meal plan. Yeah? Is that for in-state? In-state, yeah. Is anyone here out of state? Yeah, $30,000. And then you would apply your FAFSA to that. So we use, about 88% of our students get some type of financial aid award through the FAFSA. We do have one um, merit-based scholarship for in-state student called the Flagship Award. It's both need-based and merit-based. So it's a merit award, but it's only offered to the pool of students who have financial need, which is nice because it reduces the pool significantly. So you can't be the richest kid in Massachusetts, which none of us are, um, to get a scholarship from us. You definitely need to have need the financial resources, and we want to be able to provide that for you. I will also say that there is additional funding that you can get as a UMass Amherst student, which is really hard to kind of calculate and bank on before you come, but just know that if you have any small gap of, um, you know, on your bill that you have to pay for, a lot of times we're able to close that if you decide to enroll and deposit, we can give you the money that's only available to UMass Amherst students. We just can't give it to you or let you know about it in advance if you're a prospective student or if you're just an accepted student. We need to know that you're enrolled. So a lot of additional funding there. Um, the, av the, the minimum GPA for the university is about a 3.0, but I would say the average is about a 3.8. So we publish it as 3.7 to 3.9 weighted. Um, and our average SAT ranges from a 1280 to a 1320. That means the middle 50% of the students admitted had that. 25% of the admitted class had lower than a 1280. How low we go really depends on the application, or the applicant pool. Um, I think last year was about a 1050 or a 1030 around there. Um, and then that would really have a strong GPA attached to it. Okay. Any questions? So I heard that some programs like don't accept like transferable credits, like if we're in the dual enrollment program. Um, I don't know if that's true. Most of the time, the dual enrollment credits that you're taking are going to satisfy your core requirements, your general education requirements. Um, so they might not satisfy like a major requirement, but I can't imagine that you're taking like a 300 level course at, at a community college. You know what I mean? So your first two years you're gonna be doing general ed stuff. Your English, your history, your math, you gotta get all those courses out of the way. You got a lot to choose from, so it's not like you have to take this one math. You get to pick which math. I like to pick the easiest math. Don't take calculus or whatever. And then your second two years, you're doing your major. So the courses that you take during dual enrollment will satisfy those core classes. Like instead of taking Psych 101, you already took it, you can take that out of the way. Um, yeah, so I know some private schools don't take dual enrollment at all. All the state schools will, so you don't have to worry about that. Do you have double majors? Yeah, you can double major. Um, are they, if you have them in like separate buildings, is that okay, or does it have to be the same? Nope, it can be separate. Okay. Um, there are some that gets tricky, like you don't want mechanical engineering and nursing. No. But, the, um, yeah, it's doable. So a lot of the times our students will double major or double minor, or major minor, <coughs> there's a lot of different options. Yeah, what are you thinking? Uh, journalism and environmental science. Oh yeah, that's doable. So do you guys offer internships? We have hundreds of internships. Um, they're highly encouraged. I would say only some of them are required, like student teaching for a teacher, clinicals for um, nursing and stuff. So it's uh, encouraged. No one's gonna be like, it's time for an internship. It's all self-advocacy, but we have a lot of resources to assist you with getting an internship. We have our Career Service Center in our campus, and then every school and college has their own Career Service Center. We often hold career fairs where um, it's alum who come back and offer internship opportunities to our current students. Our graduates love to come back to the campus and give students opportunities because they know what kind of education they got and they're successful, so it's kind of just like paying it forward. Um, so yeah, you're gonna get uh, an advisor, you'll have resources to help you kind of narrow down what internship opportunities, you can do more than one, you can do um, them locally, or you can kind of travel if you wanna do an internship in Boston or an internship in Washington, D.C. It really depends on your area. Yes, hundreds. 
Um, are we required to live on campus for first year? Great, great question. Yes. You guys are required to live on campus your first year. Um, I don't know if there's like a radius limit for Holyoke. Car on campus first year? Yes. You have to live on campus for first year and you can bring a car. Car is not cheap. Okay. And it's not convenient. So I would say if you're to bring your car, unless you're a commuter like sophomore year, you're probably only going to park it and just use it to go home, like on a weekend or on a long weekend. It's not convenient to like take every day around. Um, we do have a free public transit, PUTA, it goes around the campus um, all day, um, as well as throughout Amherst and throughout our five college consortium, which I didn't talk about, I'll tell you in a second. So you can get pretty much anywhere for free. Um, and so if you want to pay hundreds of dollars to park your car, do that. Yeah. Um, do you have accelerated programs like if a student want to earn their master's? There are some. I don't know them all off the top of my head. I know accounting is one of them. So there are some courses where you can like do four years and then stay one additional year for your master's. Yes, mm -hmm. we do. What are you thinking of? Um, mechanical engineering. I don't know if we have an accelerated engineering. But you can ch check our website. Mm -hmm. Yes. What's the diversity rate? It's 33% technically. I would say if you were to take out students who identify as Asian, it would be about 19% black and Latino. So we're PWI, we're a predominantly white institution. Your classroom is not gonna look like this. It will be a little bit less diverse. So I always encourage students to like come on campus and join clubs and activities and kind of find their communities of people because the classroom experience isn't really gonna be your true experience on the campus. It's going to be completely different now. You're in class like seven to three. You've got two seconds in between classes for your locker. This way, it, once you're in university, you can create your schedule. Tuesday, Thursday schedules is really popular. Whether you're in class all day, Tuesday, Thursday, and you have no class Monday, Wednesday, Friday. What are you doing during those times? You're joining those clubs and activities. You're taking on leadership roles. You might have a part-time job. You might have an internship. You might do work study. So there's a lot of um, variety. And so it's highly encouraged to kind of get involved, find your communities of people so that you don't feel as though you're in a space where you're not comfortable, if that's something that you're worried about. Yeah. Um, so the, let me quickly mention the five college consortium. So I mentioned that we have 100, like about 100 majors to choose from. Included in that is a build your own major program. So if there's something that you don't see here, don't rule us out just yet because we might be able to build it for you. Um, so for example, we have students in our campus studying music production. That's not really a major in our music department, but we have ways to build it so that student can still become a music producer. Um, so we pull from different academic departments, but we also pull from the five college consortium. So if you're a UMass Amherst student, you can take two classes per semester for free at Amherst College, Smith College, Mount Holyoke College, and Hampshire. And any of their students can take two classes per semester on our campus. So if there's a major that we're building and we don't have any of the classes, but maybe Mount Holyoke has three or four of them and Smith has two, then you'll take those classes and kind of build a new major. Um, so that's really cool. And it turns Amherst into a really cool college town. When, when summer's here, like nobody's there. I'm there working, but nobody else. And then when you come back in the fall, tons of students, our 22,000 undergrad, plus all the other students from the five colleges, the four other colleges. So the town of Amherst downtown is really like, quirky niche college area where you're gonna find a lot of like restaurants you've never heard of and mom and pop shops you've never heard of and then on the other side of the campus is Hadley Mass which is where you have all the stores and restaurants that you're familiar with um, and Target and all that good stuff so you'll have like everything that you need right at your fingertips we'll give you access to it we'll give you free rides um, we'll keep you busy we'll keep you well fed <laughs> what other questions do you have? yes as like the person who reads the, all the letters and stuff, yeah. what do you look for in a student? Um, we want to know that you're you know motivated, that you have a passion, that you have um, you know you're a leader in the classroom. We just don't want you know don't be a troublemaker, no red flag. I feel like if you're academically prepared and you show us that you are an involved student and that you're consistent, that's pretty much what we're looking for. Uh, we have about a 66% acceptance rate, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of our students are going to get admitted, and then at that point, it's up to you guys to determine Harvard or UMass Amherst or whatever, <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, I mean, a well-written essay. Make sure that you like read it through a bunch of times and don't have any like weird typos. 
Um, we, I have a former colleague who was saying how she was reading an essay and a student kept writing about how they fell back on their coursework and really wanted to work hard to catch up, but wrote it like ketchup, like the condiment. Oh, <laughs> come on. So those kinds of things, like avoid little minor things because really that's just rushing. And then at that point I'm like, how bad do you really want to be here? You know, even you could be super prepared for college, but maybe not for a particular university. So just proofread, tell me the truth, like tell me who you are. You don't have to do anything cliche. I read a lot of essays about how um, this particular student shot the last winning basket, the second, you know what I'm talking about? Like the last second and the buzzer hit and he won. The, every school has this story apparently. So that's cliche. Don't <laughs> write me something that you think I want to hear. Like, oh, if she reads this, she'll be really impressed. If it's not true or if it's not like what, who you are, I'm not looking for you to wow me. I'm just looking to see what kind of student you are because there's so much more to who you are than just your grades and your SAT. And this is the time for you to tell us. So brag, like everyone tells you to be humble, not on the application. Say how wonderful you are, say how great you are, the amazing things you do. And if you have struggles, don't be afraid to share them. You know, say like I was really struggling in these class, but you know, I stayed after and I worked and I got, you know, my a my, you know, my B minus turned to an A minus. That's really impressive. And we want to know that you're going to kind of take that um, work habit and bring it to the campus. So it's not bad to say. Or even if it was like it started off as a D, but look it, it's a B now. Let me know what you were doing. Because um, that just means that you, no one's like perfect out, out the gate, but that you really do take your time to grow and develop. And those are the kinds of students we want to see. Yeah. Do you guys do like random interviews for the no. We don't do them all for the for the admission process. We'll meet with you for anything and have you you know answer any questions, but it won't be taken into consideration for our decision. Yeah. What's the percentage of students getting a job in the field? That they That's a really good question. We don't keep that data on an institutional level. We only keep the data like in smaller. So like the pre med could tell you how many of their students go to med school, that. But we don't keep it like on a university level. That being said, anecdotally, we have a really good job placement rate. Like, our students are graduating and they're going off to do really cool things. Um, and it's a combination of what we can provide for you and what you put out, right? You're the ones that go apply to jobs, get the internships. So we're going to assist you with resume. We're going to assist you with your cover letter. We'll even do mock interviews with you. Sit down and kind of just practice it out so that when you go, you can really nail it. Um, but then after that, it's all you. We do have a good job facing that. Anyone here interested in pre-med, pre-law, pre-dental, or pre-vet? Yeah, what is it? Pre-vet. Pre-vet? Pre-vet. Pre-law. Pre pre-law. Pre-law. Okay. So pre-vet is the only thing that you're going to see on the application because it's attached to animal science. Like you can't be a pre-vet student without being an animal science major. For all the other ones, pre-law, pre-dental, and pre-med, they are not attached to a major. So you can major in whatever you want to major in. So you saw, you probably saw legal studies and political science. Feel free to major in that if you want to. You can be a dance major with free law. So really, um, it's an advising track. You're going to take all the courses within that advising track that make you eligible to apply to med school or law school or dental school and so on. Um, but if you have other interests, once you start law school, med school, you don't have time to even explore anything else because you're really going to be too busy. So we understand that, and so undergrad is really the time to kind of explore that. So if you are interested in art, do it now. You won't have time once you start law school. Um, so you won't see any of those pre advising tracks on the application, just pick a major that you want. And if it's legal studies or if it's biology, great, but you don't have to do biology to do pre-med. Yeah. So like I can major in animal science without it being a part of pre-vet? No, pre-vet and animal science are attached. Okay. That's the only one that's okay. attached. But for pre-law, pre-dental, and pre-med, the other three, they're not attached. So on the application, you could select pre-vet as a major. So you guys are a bigger school, mm -hmm. and like I personally like having like relationships with my teachers, so that I can like I feel like I'd be better. Mm -hmm. so what do you what do you guys what do you think like teachers do on their part to like have that relationship with their? So students? they give you office hours. Okay, so in the beginning of the semester, you're gonna get a syllabus. The syllabus is gonna have 
all your assignments for the whole entire semester. So it's not as though you need to wait after every class to know what your homework's gonna be. You already know what's due in December. On the top of the syllabus, it's gonna have the, student, um, the teacher's name, email, phone number, and office hours. And that's when they just are sitting in their office and they have open doors, and they highly encourage students to take advantage of that, because that's when you get to go to their office and just kind of sit one-on-one, -on -one, have conversations, ask any questions, um, and get to know them. If the class is a huge lecture hall, that's really going to be beneficial. If you have 40 students or less, um, you still will probably get to know your professor in the classroom. And that's usually for those entry level courses. Once you start your major, your classes are going to reduce even less than that. And if you're you know, 20 students in a class, you'll be able to know your professor through that experience. But office hours are highly encouraged. So that's probably the best way. Yeah. Reach out to them, say I'm interested in this. You know, I'm interested in this um, research. Can you be my research, you know, professor, and they can work with you. So there's lots of ways. They're very friendly faculty. What's the ratio of teacher to student? Seventeen to one. Is our student to faculty ratio. So we have a lot of uh, faculty. Are you um, required to take a lecture on campus or throughout any of your four years? You're not required, but avoiding them is probably going to be hard. So 20% of the classes are lectures. Those are usually like those entry courses that any student can take regardless of major. So anyone can sign up for Psych 101, engineer or anybody, um, where not everyone can sign, sign up for Psych 301. Only yeah. psychology majors can. So those entry level courses are going to be really large. Okay. That being said, if you're in a lecture hall that has hundreds of students, there's going to be a discussion based um, section in addition to that. So you'll break out into smaller sections and meet with a graduate assistant or a TA who has graduated from that program and is now doing a master's or PhD, and they're gonna kind of go over what the lecture was, answer any questions that you have, and kind of do it in a smaller group um, so that you're not just like in this lecture with 170 students and then you gotta figure it out. Yeah. yeah. And if you're like really, really, like I can't do it, they'll try to find like a smaller section, but if the smallest is 80, then that's the one you gotta go. It is, but it's not all the classes. Yeah. So I read on the UMass Amherst website that um, UMass Amherst is the US representative for like some 50 millimeter telescope, so my like that or something. Well, you're teaching me this right now. Um, <laughs> I, I was gonna ask if you knew, if you knew that the 50 astronomy students were able to go down there and use it. That is fascinating, I don't know. <laughs> You can reach out to astronomy, like specifically, but they love to hear from prospective students. Um, and on your application, you can maybe like tell us that that's something that you're interested in. Is that what you're applying into, astronomy? Cool. I didn't know that. That's a lot of stuff to keep up with. We good? Answer all the questions? All right. I look forward to reading your applications, especially if you're applying into engineering. Um, I can answer any questions though about any major. It's not that I only know about engineering, so if you want to reach out, um, I can leave a business card if anybody wants any information. And that's it. Thank you guys for your time. Thank you.